Hi folks. If we have a look at the last shot in this timeline, it might look like an ordinary clip. But if I loop just that shot on its own, you can see that instead of the frames repeating, it's actually showing the live input from this camera over here, connected through this little guy here. And if I look at the clip under the graphics layer, remove the spark from it, you can see it's just a gradient. As soon as I put the spark work on, it shows the input from the camera. And if I go back up to the layer with the graphics, it'll comp the graphics live over the input. So this works in batch in a similar way. If I add the spark and hit play, you'll see that even though it's looping, it's actually just showing the input. Now the first time I add a spark to the batch, you can see it's running at 30 frames a second, which is actually not the right frame rate. For some reason, you have to add a clip of the right frame rate to the batch and then trash it. And then when you go to play it again, it will play at the right frame rate, which is 23.976. And as well as just watching that, we can stick some nodes after it and it'll process those in real time. So if I add an image node, we can grade the input during playback. Or if I put a matchbox shader after it, it'll do that in real time as well. Simple matchboxes like this will probably run at 24 frames a second. If I get something more complicated, uh, like uh, maybe this guy, you'll probably see that it starts to uh, struggle if I play that. Yeah, it probably only gets 12 frames a second. Just because uh, the GPU can't keep up. If we want to record some of this stuff from the live input, an easy way to do it is to use the batch node cache. If I click the little orange dot, it'll set it to read-write for that node. And the first time you play it through, it'll save the frames and then play them back after that. So make sure you don't drop any frames doing that. It's probably a good idea to have a project in uncompressed raw format. If you have it in normal uncompressed, it'll try to save EXR files and it probably won't be able to do it in real time. Once it's recorded with cache, you can use a normal render node to turn it into a regular flame clip. And if you alt click the orange dot, it'll reset the cache and that'll go back to showing the live input again. And it usually runs fast enough that you can comp the live input over a previously recorded clip just using action. So that's showing in the um, background the previously recorded clip and the live footage in the top right. That's probably most useful if you want to line up uh, multiple takes because you can mix between a previously recorded clip or just a still and the live input. Or do it with a roto. Which will show just a window of the live input against a previously recorded clip. We can put a key in there as well. I just pull a very bad key off this pink thing.
This key's going to look pretty horrible because the camera's kind of rubbish. Uh, but hopefully you can see the idea. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, there'll be a link under the video to download the plugin. Um, give it a try and hopefully it's helpful. That's all.